Nope, just going for his Elish Norn. <laughs> that is all four Elish Norns in play. Oh, I love it. Tragic arrogance. Oh, yeah. I'm packing one of those. <laughs> Today on Commander Replay, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but we're going to play four Elish Norn Grand Cenobites next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone. This is a game that I have been wanting to film for several years now. Uh, this is 4X Elish Norns. Got some different art on that one. Uh, but yeah, there are four Elish Norns at this table. That's what's going on today. Man, I've set a second land. Nah, no, even on the second land is probably a little dicey. Mulligan that one. Uh, also, I am land light. Okay. Hmm. That still isn't, like, the greatest hand I've ever seen. But I'm going to keep it and just hope we find a small creature. There's not, like, a ton of creatures in this deck. So one of the things I thought about with four... Oh, God, Authority of the Consoles already. Uh, one of the things I thought about with four Elish Norns is that, like, small creatures probably aren't where you want to be, so there's not tons of them in the deck. I did think about a number of things trying to build this deck, and I definitely ended up, like, somewhere in the middle of all of them, so, like, we'll call this deck unfocused. Uh, I flip-flopped on what I wanted to do a number of times. Uh, Dismantling Wave is not a land. Would prefer. We just need to draw lands, tithes, Archaeomancers, maps, all that sort of stuff would be very good for us. The lands are a little light, but there are quite a few things that find lands. We've got tithe. Uh, we've got Land Tax. I don't always run that one. Uh, we've got Archaeomancer's Map. Uh, we've also got, no, uh, the Knight of the White Orchid got cut at the last second. What is this one? Environmental Sciences. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. You gain two life. I mean, that's not awful. Curious what's on the other side of that, because those are usually all dual-faced. Well, no, I don't know. Does that make sense in a monocolor deck? If that's not a dual-faced card? Hmm. How's the lesson mechanic work? Anyone remember that? <laughs> There's a third land. That's good. Not getting stuck yet. Uh, we'll just run the Sword of the Animus down there. And we'll pass like that. Takasha's welcome. So one of the things I did think about is that based on playing the Boros plus one plus one counters deck, which I filmed last night, I think one of the things you could do, like in this setting with these four Elish Norns, you could go tokens and then just race to make sure you get like Anthems and Felidar Retreat and Cathar's Crusade, your own Elish Norn, uh, all that stuff in play. And that was a strategy that I did think about. And just in like all the Ajani's, basically everything that puts plus one plus one counters on your creatures is not the worst idea for this setting. But it is, there, it'll be very timing dependent, right? If someone hits a soul ring and then like a Thran Dynamo and gets off to a really quick Norn, you might not be able to set up the right way for that. And that would be a huge headache. Ultimately, I decided on more or less a Blade of Selves deck. But even, it's not like heavily into ETBs. It's got some. But it's not a full-on ETB deck like you might expect. There's a tithe, thank God. Uh, we should... We'll assume that our opponents are going to hit their fourth land drop. Play the Rogue's Passage. Uh, play the Blade of Selves. We'll pass like that, and then we'll tithe during our opponent's turns. I guess it doesn't matter at this point. Oh, don't tell me they're going to start missing land drops. <laughs> don't tell me they're going to start missing land drops. Uh, they get to draw with the Takashas, but there's a land drop. Okay. Uh, that's a frontline medic and an Esper Sentinel. With the Esper Sentinel on the stack, we'll play the tithe right now. Get our two lands. We'll get the misfail just in case we need it. Uh, if an artifact, if a, if an equipment gets blown up, we have a couple equipment tutors, and uh, you know, like if Stone Hewer Giants in play, yeah, with misfail, you put something from your graveyard back in and then just pull it out with Stone Hewer. I've done stuff like that. It doesn't come up a lot, but every once in a long while, this is could be a weird enough game where that might actually matter. <laughs> Uh, I could see, I could see a couple things happening with this game. I could see a very long, drawn-out game if Norns just keep, like, if everyone gets a lot of mana and everyone can just keep casting their commander, I see this game getting real weird with the Elish Norns, but, which is also why I wanted to do it, because I'm like, this is going to be a weird game. Helm of Awakening. Oh, KO, that's never a good idea. That is such a dangerous card. I mean, we're all playing Mono White, so I guess it only gets, like, so out of hand, but still, the person with card draw, that is a dangerous card to run. Bonder's Ornament, yep. <laughs> I almost put that in by accident when I was trying to get Bonder's Enclave, but then 
this ended up in there, but I, I switched them out, so it is no longer in the deck, sadly. The other thing I thought about doing with this deck is just going straight Voltron and using, like, Black Blade Reforged. Uh, what's the other ones? The three meta? Stratoscythe. Stratoscythe is going to be insane in this game because there's going to be so many planes. Uh, Defiler of Faith. I forgot about that one. It does come in tapped. Uh, open the Armory is something. Gives us something to do, which I like. What do we need? Opponents are still a few turns away from Elishnorn. I'm almost thinking Bitterhorn just because we need a creature. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Hope that doesn't backfire. Because we do also need um, card draw at some point. But we also really need a creature. Uh, I guess we're not paying. Who's doing the math? We can cast Bitterhorn this turn also. Bitter Thorn. I always say Bitter Horn. It is Bitter Thorn. Nissa's Animist. We'll grab that. Play the Untapped Land. And then we'll cast the Bitter Thorn. Oh, right. Helm of Awakening. Right, right, right. Well, could have played our lands different. Whoops. Uh, that does mean Elish Norn will be here sooner than I was just anticipating, but uh, opponents are still only on four lands, so we should be good for at least, like, a turn. If we can get one attack off with this thing, get get two lands, it'll be sweet. Uh, Moon Silver Key, card that I need to run more than I do. Just hard to, like, justify a deck slot for it. It's, man, get, cutting decks down to 100 is getting really difficult, because it used to be... We'll say eight years ago, eight to ten years ago, the comparison used to be, like, good card versus bad card. Now, now it's different. Now it's, everything you're looking at is probably a good card. It's what synergizes with your deck more, is really the question. And that makes it much harder. Phyrexian Unlife, ooh, spicy. Uh, at some point, I don't love this, but, like, at some point, we're probably gonna have to cycle this Dismantling Wave, because there's already a ton of artifacts and enchantments out there. Now, there is... I think I cut the Austere Command, but there's still a Farewell in the deck. Uh, initially, this deck had, like, six board wipes, and we'll take a peek at the deck list. Here's what I ended up with. Uh, like I said, this is an unfocused list. I waffled on what I wanted to do a couple times, and everyone was waiting on me to just finish up the deck list. So, uh, I ended up with this, like, sort of ETB list, but it's not fully committed to ETB. We do have the second Elish Norn. Got Revelar Karmic Eyed because Karmic Eyed with another Elish Norn in play is a sack outlet, and that can get a little spicy. Um, but I did cut the, uh, I had, um, Altar of the Brood in the deck, but I took that out. Just, I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like going for the combo. It is a thing that I could do, and I have lost to that. I have lost to people using my own Elish Norn as a sack outlet. Comes up every once in a while. That's always weird, but... Kale's gonna draw with the Bonders ornament. Yep. Ooh, yeah, love that plane. has got the little pterodactyl thing on there. Need to get me some of those. Oh, the first... Wow, first Elish Norn is here. Well, gonna get punished on the Nissa's Animus play. <laughs> Gross. Yep, Defiler, be like that. So much for our early game value. Also a problem of us going last, right? Because if we get that turn before that comes down, that's two extra lands. That stuff hurts. Um, untapped land, we can at least cast this thing. 7-7 seven, seven over to Zeno, but now you also have to start thinking like board wipes and stuff as the Norns start coming down here. I guess we, like, if we can keep hitting lands, Heliod's intervention late game could theoretically blow up all the stuff we needed to blow up, but without touching ours. Ancient Tomb is a site for sore eyes. Does Ancient Tomb get us to our Elish Norn? I think it does. I think it does. Cast our Elish Norn. It comes in tapped. It shrinks down the size of the other stuff. Uh, so for a zombie, it negates their advantage. And for everyone else, uh, it is absolutely miserable. <laughs> their creatures will get minus four, minus four. <laughs> I mean, if someone has a board wipe now, now they're definitely going to play it. Ooh, extra planar lens. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, uh, riding this Blade of Selves on Elish Norn is kind of the main point of the deck. Uh, if you guys have... Oh, God. Oh, that's another Elish Norn. That's all of them. Um, there, no, that's three of them. There's one to go. Ooh, Search Supremacist. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker, you control Investigate. Yeah, I need to run that card more, too. Does KO have the board wipe? Nope, just going for his Elish Norn. <laughs> that is all four Elish Norns in play. Oh, I love it. Uh, that one's a minus one. One. Ours is a minus two one. <laughs> oh, this is silly. I love this. <laughs> uh, I think Zombie gonna have a pretty good advantage here. If they have, like, removal in their hand, I think they can, like, dictate this game a lot better. <laughs> 
Vesuva. What's it going to copy? Copying the ancient tomb. Yep. The ramp always be good. So what we need to do, we just need to dodge removal through zombies turn. And then we can equip the blade of selves and then uh, we should be able to like get in the driver's seat of this game a little bit. And based on the fact that like no one played a board wipe up till now, like if KO had one, I think he played, uh, he may have played his Elish Norn for the memes if he has a board wipe, that is possible. Zombie hasn't been in a position to cast a board wipe, so he could have one. But a Xeno like would have cast the board wipe if he had it, right? Solemn Simulacrum, it'll die instantly, but still reasonable value. Also cost reduced. Also triggers authority to the consoles. Wish I thought to put authority in there, because, uh, man, authority is so good. You can gain so much life with that, and you drop it down early. And it just makes everything terrible for opponents. Blind obedience also. Forgot to put that one in, probably should have. Endless Atlas for opponent, that's fine. Wait, does extra planar affect all? Whenever I land, tap with the same name as the... Uh, yes, that affects all players. Oh, that's interesting. Zombie getting the ramp going here. There's a Gilded Lotus. Yeah, Zombie's got... He's having a nice little turn. Empowered Auto Generator, what does that one do? Put a charge counter on it. Uh, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of counters on it. Okay, so more mana. But I think we're going to untap with our commander, and that's a really good thing. There's a Karmic Guide. Nice. Oh, no. They're on basic planes, and we're on snow covers. We don't get doubled. Ooh, that sucks. And I thought about cutting the snow covers too, because... Not really doing anything with them in this deck. Ouch. Well, that is disappointing. Uh, equip the Blade of Selves. Really? Don't you? Oh, God, KO. Come on. Um, We don't have... Ooh, we do have the mana. Are we using this Lapse of Certainty? Goes back to the top of the library, right? Yeah, it goes to the library. They'll just do it again, but we will clear out the other Norns. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I was hoping to save this for something bigger, but here we are. The white counter spell. <laughs> Not today, KO. Not today. Play the misspell planes. Go to combat. Swing into KO for uh, trying to mess with our thing. We will myriad. Myriad again. That'll trigger the authority of the consoles. And for a brief moment, there are three Elish Norns on our side of the battlefield. Uh, we'll choose one to keep. We'll keep the original. I love this combo. <laughs> the old minus six, minus six for our opponents. Elish Norn coming back. Yep. Devout. Chaplain. I mean, I guess they draw off of it. But even still, it is likely that we'll see more Elish Norns just coming back. Though, okay, I was going to get his path back. Now he's going to path. Yep. At least we get a land. The land is more beneficial than the life gain at this moment. But I really... Needed to get, we needed to get a Sword of the Animus Bitterthorn attack off, and we have not. And so the problem becomes, if everyone else just casts their Elish Norn, we can't even really do much with the Protector of the Crown. We'll become the Monarch, but that won't do that much. Sun Titan. Actually, we could probably get Protector and put, uh, put the Animus on it. Ooh, Archon of Justice. That's a good call for this game. I didn't think of that one. So if someone else casts an Elish Norn, this'll die, and it'll give you some things to think about. Uh, I do have a feeling that uh, Blade of Cells might be on the chopping block. Yeah, I was like, I didn't really want to show this early, but our hand was just weird, and we didn't have, like, that much we could do, so. Oh my god. Zombie has so much mana. Yeah, maybe maybe we just need to cut down the mana ramp this turn. Fifteen mana? I'm gonna dump his hand, whatever it is. Shattered Angel. Elish Norn. That is two of them. Archon of Justice dies. Goes for our Blade of Selves. That being... Oh, man. That being the case, I mean, I was thinking about... Do we cycle the Dismantling Wave? There's a Plains. Mana's good. We do need to get mana going. Um, let's see. If we cut off the mana supply, can K.O. get to his commander? Uh, that'll trigger Shattered Angel. No, K.O. won't be able to recast his commander. So, the thing that's going to make the most sense here is... Let's go Protector of the Crown. What is it? It'll cost five. Two to equip. And then two to shoot the thing. Okay, yeah. Comes in tapped, we gain a life. Uh, then we will dismantling wave. The extra planar lens, the helm of awakening, and I think the empowered auto generator is going to surpass the uh, gilded load. Mm, maybe we go over the card draw, given that he's got a lot of ramp. Yep, let's do that. Uh, and then we'll equip Sword of the Animist. Hope that this thing survives back to our turn. We really need it to. We need to get an attack off to get these lands. Well, yeah, I guess KO can't. Oh, uh, if someone attacks us. This will take the damage, and then it'll just die. 
So that'll be a problem. We do draw a card right here, though, which we badly need. Soul Ring. Uh, mixed feelings on Soul Ring. Yep. Shattered Angel getting work done. Six life already. I'm jealous. Yep, they're going to attack our way. Uh, unfortunately, we can't block. They'll, they'll just kill our protector, but leaves the door open for KO to uh, uh, this moment. Authority of the consoles is going to wreck us pretty good. Yep, so I'm tight in our way. Oh, no, Helm of Awakening's back. Uh, well, at least the doubled mana's gone. I mean, Helm of Awakening's still good. Everyone's low on cards, so Helm of Awakening isn't going to do as much, but... Uh, KO steals the Monarch. Yep. Dino DNA. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Activate only as a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 6-6 six, six green dinosaur. That seems pretty good. Uh, going for the Esper Sentinel. Yeah. Card draw. Everyone's low on cards. Card draw is the thing that everyone needs right now. Elixir of Immortality gains 5 life. Shuffles of the graveyard. KO draws at the end step. Staff of the Storyteller. Uh, you can remove counters to draw cards. It's good for a token deck. See what zombies got. Ten mana. Four cards. Darksteel Monolith. Indestructible. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a colorless spell from your hand. So one free spell. That Contagion Engine. Hmm. I would love to catch Mind's Eye. Because then... Like, the board isn't very threatening, and we can just sit there and draw cards for a while, and that would make me real happy. Yeah, I mean, Contagion Engine's probably gonna have to get shot at some point. Well, I guess, eh, there's no counters on our stuff, so we might be okay in that sense. It's not like an immediate thing. Uh, Elish Nord coming our way, and Shattered Angel over to KO, yep. Zombie becomes the Monarch. Stratoscythe, nice. Get the Soul Ring. I mean, are there enough planes in play that we could just one-shot someone? <laughs> there might be. Uh, recast our Commander. Need five, that's four, five. We're not going to show this until next turn. We do need our Elish Norn to stick for a turn. Sun Titan goes down. Yeah, I guess we'll equip the Bitter Thorn since we have three mana left over. I love the attrition that's happening. <laughs> it's like trying to move through molasses because anything that could be threatening gets neutered by multiple El Elish Norns being in play. Yep, Shattered Angel doing real work. Card I always want to run a little bit more, man. If it was four mana... It'd be so much easier to justify this as a 3-3. Three, three. A 5-mana 3-3. Three, three. Just tough. Just tough. That's a selfless spirit. That'll die immediately, though. Oh, they're trying to draw the card. Okay. Yep, going for the card draw. Fair. We have five planes. Xeno has eight. Ko has... Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. The snow cover thing is going to bite us again. Oh, no. Please tell me we have, like, a one regular planes. We do not. Oh, my God. The snow covereds. I didn't think about it. Biting us twice. Ugh. So, yep, no one-shotting for us. Yep, there's the fourth Elish Norn. All four Elish Norns back in play. <laughs> yeah, this will be fun. Still even getting, like, plus five. Yeah, if we had... Ooh, that killed Xeno's uh, Elish Norn. Palantir of Orinthok. Put an influence counter on and scry two, then target opponent may have you draw a card if that player doesn't mill X cards. Oh, yeah. Ugh. That player loses life equal to the mana value of those cards. Martyrs Cry. Exile all white creatures. For each creature exiled this way, its controller draws. At least we get to draw a card. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, we drew Ameria. Oh, uh, Ameria's interesting. We're on six planes, really. Back to the command zone. The real question is, who can recast the Relish Norns? So this one should be on 11, I think. I don't think they can. They really uh, just want to get the Protector of the Crown is what I'm trying to do, but... Ooh, Avacyn's a spicy one. That could be tough to get through. I thought about putting that in here, and I probably should have, but I didn't. Uh, Tale of Tunaviel. Target creature gains indestructible for as long as you control it. Oh, uh, the other modes. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Up to two target creatures you, you control gain lifelink. Yeah, okay. It's good at this stage. Palantir of Ornthak. And the Monarch. Uh, we'll have them not draw the first card. Ugh, was an Ogier Tak? Lost a bunch of life. Ouch. Nadar, huh? Uh, play the Ameria. I don't think... Can Ko recast? I don't think Ko can recast his commander. Zombie can. This one should be on 11, so they shouldn't be able to recast. So that being the case, I think we go Nadar. I guess we'd also Stratoscythe. Make sure something stays alive. Gain a life, we'll venture into the dungeon. Mad Mage is usually correct. Uh, we gain a life. So there's an Avacyn in play, and this will have 5 toughness. Zombie can recast it and bring this down to... Mm, really want that card. Recast our commander? Ah, oh, we're one short. Yep, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, get Stratoscythe. We need the Nadar to survive. Ugh, snow-covered planes. 
equip the Stratoscythe, uh, and equip the Sword of the Envis. And we're going to try to stay off the Ancient Tomb, just to not burn all of our life down. Okay, Nadar is a 9-9. Love it. So the next level we get the Scry. I love the Creature Can't Attack one. We can shut down that uh, Avacyn for a turn. Takasha's Welcome. Uh, Grand Abolisher going to draw the card. Soul Ring. Elish Norn. Okay, protecting their Grand Abolisher. How'd they have that much mana? I didn't realize they had that much. Hmm. Was there Elish Norn only on 9? Maybe it was only on 9. I guess this thing's still in play too, but... Ramos Ekor Ancient Shield. What? Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card, then make an 0-3 white wall with Defender. Okay, yeah. Recast the Elixir. Beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control with Defender gain Exalted. It's an interesting card. I don't even know what set that is. What set, what set symbol is that? Everyone's life totals are going the wrong direction. Everyone except us is above their starting life total. 55, 43, and 50. Ugh, it's not good. It's going to take a while to chew through that. I'm going to return a creature to the battlefield. Ooh. Ogier Talk, huh? That's a pretty good one. Uh, opponent's going to proliferate, then proliferate again. Looks like just their stuff. Still reasonable. Yeah, creature gain lifelink. Lifelink on the Avacyn. Yep. Feel like it's going to come our way. This thing goes down. Elish Norn, coming back. Yep. So there are two Elish Norns in play, and high likelihood that we're going to cast ours on our turn. Misfell planes a card. Uh, into Zeno. Okay, cool. Thank God. Zeno's at 57. Uh, they get a clue. Yeah, that's a card draw. That's important. Palantir of Ornthak and the Monarch trigger. Yep. Uh, they're going to make us do the mill thing again. Oh, there's four on there? Yeah, they can draw the card. <laughs> I don't feel like taking the damage from, what, four cards? Is that how it works? Yep. We'd love to wrestle that Monarch back. We'd have to use the Rogue's Passage to do it. Ooh, that's a Bruno. Is this a human? No, it's a giant soldier. We do have Brazella in this deck, which I did include as a win condition. We can do some interesting stuff with the Karmic Guide. We can get the Karmic Guide back. Let's do this. Let's get the Bitterthorn on our Nadar. I don't think... I think they just take this. They're at 49. Send this into Zeno. Trigger Nadar, Bitterthorn, Sword of the Animist, and Search the Premises. Uh, we get to scry one. Uh, that'll be useless with the searches. Ah, uh, Skull Clamp. Well, I guess we don't have that many tokens. But assumingly something will die at some point. But, you know, I guess put it to the bottom. What does it matter? Use the ability. Finally get a land. Oh, man, we've been waiting all game. Turn 10 now. In hindsight, if I know how things play out, I go Mask of Memory instead of that Bitter Thorn. But actually, I'd probably go Skull Clamp. Do we have any creatures, though? I don't know if we had any creatures. Any... I guess Elish Norns died a few times. Um, Here's a thought. I really want to draw the card, but can we defend this? Because Avacyn's still in the air, and that's always a problem. And it'll be... We have seven planes? It's really close. Can we get our commander? Probably not, but... Nope, still one short. Oh, you know what, though? Even if it dies, we just bring it back on our turn. Okay, that works. So, Karmic Guide, it'll die immediately. Ha! <laughs> we can target itself. Yep, that's the thing we can do. Get the Protector of the Crown. We become the Monarch. So, even if it just dies, we can just get it back with Emeria, and that seems fine to me. And we draw out the end step, thank God. Emeria can also be very helpful. What other permanents do we have? Uh, just the Karmic Guide and the Giant at the moment. Opponent cracking some clues, yep. Archetype of Courage. Uh, that'll die immediately, though. Or will it? No, they counterbalanced. Uh, we didn't cast our Elish Norn, so. Gilded Lotus. Ether Flux Reservoir, that's scary. No, I've got the Heliod's Intervention if they get above 50. I mean, one more. They're out of cards. Up to 47. Uh, luckily that'll put, uh, I mean, that'll put a huge target on their back. But... Someone's going to have to get in there and do some big damage because we literally can't let them cast another card. Soul Ring for Kale. I'm sure he's wanting that real bad. He's been stuck on mana. Was I supposed to go for the other? No, this is the one with the card advantage. God, it's so many levels away, though. Ugh. Dino DNA. We're going to make a 6-6 six, six, uh, Esper Sentinel? Yep. It's a 2-2 two -two with the Norns in play. Guild of Lotus. Uh, and he gets to draw a card and make another defender. Zeno still at 49. After oh, God. Even after taking punishment from us and Zombie. Kao's going to exile the Shattered Angel. It's not awful. I would take it. Do hope he doesn't hit our Karmic Guide, though. Do want to leave that in there. Uh, fortunately, that's only as a sorcery. Uh, if we don't draw anything, this may just have to be the Heliod's Intervention turn. Don't feel like getting Aether Flux Reservoir. Stone of Eric. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Ugh. Uh, sacrifice it. Exile target player's graveyard. Draw a card. So graveyard removal. 
Not great. I would shoot that. Opponent's going to proliferate, then proliferate again. Yeah. Yeah, that probably needs to get shot. Although, I guess if we get all the stuff with counters, then... Wow, that's making so much mana. Yep. Sort of truth and justice. That's a spicy one. More counters on stuff. Ooh, they can put plus counters on the team? Don't love that. Perhaps missequenced, because if they did the... Yeah. Sword on the Elish Norn. Nope, moves it to the Avison. Put it on the wrong spot. Yeah, it's 10-10 Avison. Pro white and blue. That's real nasty. Gift of Estates. They have three planes. Yeah, Avison over to Zeno. Yep, here comes the truth and justice. Yeah, this probably has to be the Heliod's intervention turn. Opponent's down to 39. Zombie's up to 58. Uh, end step, trigger. Uh, and we're gonna misfail. Open the armory back to the bottom. Targeting us once again. Yeah, I don't feel like losing that much life, so uh, <laughs> they can have the cards. Yeah, they can draw. Brings it back to our turn. Um, ooh, I was planning to wait on this, but I don't want to lose Karmic Guide to the Exiles, so I think we just have to do this now. I was going to plan to do this at instant speed, but uh, let's find out how much mana we have. That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus the cost reduction of 1 is 15, so we can hit 13 targets. Hell yeah, intervention. X13. Get the Exile, mm, Exile... The draw, the sword, oh, oh, the artifacts are all exit. Never mind, his artifacts are all indestructible. Uh, we are just going to lose our karmic guide then. Is all that's going to happen? Oh, we can choose not to use the ability. Yeah, we won't use the ability then. No. How often does that happen? You choose no one, you're a Maria. Uh, that's a planes. Cool if we had something to do with that Ameria Shepherd. We need to draw more cards. How do we draw more cards? We need to get further into this thing. Uh, actually, Zombie's gonna be a real problem because we can't blow up all of this stuff. Like, we need Farewell to exile what's going on over there. How much mana is Norn? So I think we'll have exactly enough to go, mm, Norn, Rogue's Passage, and then just have to, yeah. Cast Elish Norn. Comes in tapped, Authority of the Consoles. Play the Planes. Uh, activate Rogue's Passage on the Dar. Oh, hey, Ancient Tomb damage goes to, uh, Protector of the Crown. Love it. Love it. Swing this into Xeno. Let's do the scry on the bottom this time, like a professional. Actually, I don't know if that one's on the bottom this time. Use ability. Get a land. Wow, we're going to run out of basics real soon. Use ability. Get a land. There's two left in the deck. I might leave them, although there is Graveyard Exiled up that we can't deal with. Uh, we want the we want the treasure, or do we want... Yeah, I think we twisted Caverns the Avacyn in this moment. How far away from card advantage are we? Scry 2 is the next one. Need two more? Oof. Love a way to, like, blink that or something. Rip Helm of the Host off the top. <laughs> Opponent's down to 27. And we get to draw a card at the end step. Cage Sun. Hmm. Pumps the team a little bit. We have a lot of mana. We really need cards is the thing we're looking for. Hope that Mind's Eye shows up at some point. Actually, you want to... Luminarch Ascension? Wouldn't be... Mm -hmm. Illuminarch Ascension would be okay. There are still two opposing Elish Norns in play. Ours counteracts one of them, I guess. But yeah, it would be fine. We can protect it for a minute with the uh, Protector of the Crown. Opponent's going to crack another clue. Tragic Arrogance. Oh, yeah. I'm packing one of those. <laughs> uh, our creatures are going to... Oh, well, they're going to crack... Okay, they're going to crack this thing, so uh, our creatures won't get exiled, which is actually massive. They're going to exile Zeno's Graveyard. Love that. Love that. Uh, importantly, that'll get rid of the uh, thing that makes everything indestructible. Okay. That's a nice play out of Xeno right here. Let's see what they decide to keep. I'm curious. Because this is a win condition, but their life's not great, and they don't have a lot of cards, so like, I think you probably got to keep the card draw. That's really what's going to determine this game. I love how uh, attrition-based this game has been. And that's what I was expecting going into this. I'm like, oh, this is going to be an weird, interesting game where you battle for inches. <laughs> Let's see what we get to keep. Uh, we're keeping our Norn, our Soul Ring. Oh, we're losing the other other guys. We do need to find a land so that we can trigger a Maria Shepherd one time and get the other things back. Uh, only Norns left in play. Nice. Uh, Osher Tok dies, comes back as a land. Uh, the S word is still in play. I mean, wow, that cleaned up so much stuff. Uh, we're lucky we got a few of those attacks off when we did. I think we got four lands. So that's a big, big deal. What's in our graveyard? And the Dar's in the graveyard, and importantly, the ETB, no, because we can't attack this turn, so the ETB doesn't really speed us up on that dungeon at all. But what it does do, it does allow us to scry before our draw step, and that's actually a pretty big deal. 
So a dude like that. Uh, Protector survived, also important. Unfortunately, our Elish Norn is tapped. So if someone can steal that Monarch from us, we'll have to try to wrestle it back. Could be a thing. Uh, opponents got no power, but they still get to investigate when they attack. So yeah, card draw. <laughs> All the Elish Norns are O3s. Funny. Um, no, yeah, if you put the sword on there, it'll get big enough to do damage. So coming our way, but no damage. Will that steal the Monarch? Whenever a creature deals combat damage, you know, so it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. I think I need to run Tragic Arrogance more than I do. Brilliant Restoration. Nice play. KO. I'm going to get all his stuff back. Nothing crazy, but a lot of value. A lot of mana. Some stuff to do with the dino thing. What's the exile? Uh, going for the Avacyn. <laughs> As you do. Luckily, he hasn't hit our stuff yet. But our KO Mancer is Matt. Showing up late to the party for KO. He's definitely going to want those lands. Also gets to draw a card. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the play that KO just made. He's not set up to do damage yet, but he just set himself up, like, because I don't know that this game's necessarily going to end soon. He just set himself up for the long haul real big, because now he's got mana and some card draw and some interesting effects that he can play with, uh, where he, before, I mean, he was sitting on lands only, basically. We're, we kind of need to draw something. Uh, we need to hit big with that scry, too. Oh, Yosai. Oh, no. Oh, no, that one's so nasty. Uh, and it just immediately dies. What's he tapping? Such a nasty card. All the zombie stuff. Wow. Well, glad it didn't hit any of ours. Slowing zombie down a little. Yeah, he's got the sword. The sword's good. The sword can win that war of attrition with what's going on right now. Uh, importantly, what is this? He's a dragon knight, and he's a giant soldier. But we can reanimate the karmic guide, which can get one of the other two. Okay, that's a thing. Got something in mind here. Ideal at range. Put a counter on a creature. Yep. Archaeomancer's map triggers. Zombie loses most of his turn. That was rough. Brings it back to our turn. Uh, Nadar will survive, right? It'll get minus two. Yeah, Nadar will survive. That's important. Definitely need that. Use the ability. We venture. Scry two. Love it. Land Makokoro, huh? Uh, is actually solid. Uh, put the planes on the... Are we putting the planes on the bottom? Hmm. Put the planes on the bottom. Draw the Makokoro. Yeah, uh, well, let's see. If we go a Maria Shepherd, if we go a Maria Shepherd, we should probably get the Stratoscythe first. We want to keep stuff alive. That's really important. I guess the first thing is let's get Cage Sun into play. Uh, we are still the Monarch, notably. So we'll draw another at the end step. Choosing white. Cast the Maria Shepherd. Play the Makokoro. Maria the Stratoscythe. What does one say? Whenever a land enters the battlefield or an opponent's control, that that player controls more lands. Oh, okay, I'm answering that. Right. Didn't recognize the art. Oh, no, we have to recast it again. We have to exile our last planes, I think. Return it to our hand. Oh, that's awkward. Yeah, cast it again. Oh, we have two basics left, so there's one in the deck. Good to know. Uh, activate Makokoro. Uh, War Room is more card draw. We can't play it till next turn. But that is okay. Life's not exactly where we want it to be. But uh, who we get in Stratoscythe? I mean, zombies open. We can get a big shot in for commander damage right here. That's probably a pretty good idea. Send this into zombie. What does this one do? Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls deals combat damage to you, that opponent gets a poison counter. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, let's leave some mana up just in case we need a Heliod's intervention, anything. 11 commander on zombie. He's still at 47, but we could... Yeah, I mean, we can get there next turn with commander damage if he doesn't have removal. We draw a card. Mask of Memory. <laughs> Showing up late. I really wanted to tutor it early, and I probably should have. Although, I guess it might be dead now. And I actually question how many cards we may have drawn with it. Uh, <laughs> based on how the game has played out thus far. But, so, if no one can remove the Elish Norn, one, we can kill Zombie. Two, we are poised to have a lot of card draw next turn. We have the War Room in hand. We, as long as we can attack with Nadar or Blink it, uh, we get the Exile 2 from the top of our deck, we may play them. We can cast the Mask of Memory, and if we need to, we can Rogue's Passage to make sure it gets through. Uh, and... We have the Makokoro, probably the last one we want to use, but also we're still the Monarch at this moment, though. The opponent can easily get it with the Truth and Justice because we can't block. I haven't been paying close attention, but KO can really get kept caught up on lands that are KO Mancer's map. I don't know how many lands he has in hand. I assume that he ran out a while ago, um, and I assume that he got two with the map and didn't have any additional ones beyond the ones with the map, but still, even making up two lands... In a turn cycle is really big. 
see what Zeno's got. Uh, Rick, that's fine. Elish Norn swinging over to KO just to get the investigate clue. Cool card. And then when we sacrifice the clue, venture into the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do all that stuff. Oh, I forgot to mention, we did instill some rules in this game. Now we'll be like two hours into this game. An hour 34, that's actually not bad. Uh, anyway, we did have two rules for this game, uh, which are that no Korma spell Urborg combo and like no mass land destruction at all. I'm like, I want people to be able to play the game, right? I, I understand that that's a combo with Elish Norn. Um, though I guess it would get really interesting trying to protect your lands uh, in that scenario. <laughs> that would... <laughs> Maybe we have to try that again. I mean, that'll be this game's going really long. It's been an hour and a half, and uh, if Zombie doesn't have removal, we can take him out, but it's still going to be a while before we get through everyone else, and then KO's about to make an Avacyn, so that'll be a thing. But yeah, it'd be really funny trying to make sure all your lands stay alive with that stuff. But the other rule was uh, no Gideon's Intervention, Nevermore, uh, you can't cast Elish Norn type cards. Again, the idea that I wanted people to be able to play the game, right? Now, what constitutes playing the game when everyone has, like, no power worth of creatures? Uh, and your creatures are useless? I don't know. I'm enjoying it. We are doing okay. We are... I would say we are set up ever so... Mm, the Archon's back. The Archon can change things. Stratoscythe? Though at some point you have to think about hitting the Aether Flux, too. Yeah, going for the Stratoscythe. Well, wind condition down. We'll have to dig for a new one. It's two things that have gotten got by the Archon. Two things that could be winning us the game. The other was the Blade of Selves. We still have a Black Blader Forge, and Black Blader Forge would actually be give us more size and not be tied to snow planes. The Mimic Vat, we've got one of those. I'm like, well, a lot of creatures are probably going to die this game. Mimic Vat seems very interesting. Can you do this at instant speed? Nope, only as a sorcery. Pace six, so I assume he's going to want to make that Avacyn. Oh no, that's Field of Ruin. Oh. Hopefully he shoots the Rogue's Passage first. Okay. Oh, this will be interesting. So, Field of Ruin goes off, which means we'll get a land. Question is, what do we get back? Uh, Protector will be really small, so that's a concern. And would just die to, like, an attack from Zombie. Um, well, I guess KO's probably not going for his Norn this turn. Yeah, I mean, we might as well get the Protector. The plus one from these is okay, but we might as well just get the Protector. Uh, just so... Because then no one can steal the Monarch from us, and we'll just have the Monarch, and... Opponent's got to jump through hoops just to kill us, which I like. Yeah, we'll go to the... Uh, well, there's a thought. Could go to our hand so that we skip Zombie's turn and it doesn't die. But I, we'll just go to the battlefield. I guess we still have the Amaria. Oh, yeah, we have the Cage Sun also, which counteracts just a little bit. If we can finish the dungeon with Nadar, that's an additional plus one, plus one. But with the Cage Sun, that cancels out an Elish Norn. Okay, I was going to draw a card. Sacrificing the Basilica. Probably trying to catch a land with that. Yep, brings another land in. Well, we had a lead until the Stratoscythe went down, but uh, we still have a lot of card draw lined up, as long as we can do stuff with that. Although, Rogue's Passage shuts down, it makes it harder to get Mask of Memory through, so that is kind of a thing. Although, we do have a flyer. If no one else has flyers, that's important. Uh, KO passes with six mana up, although I guess there's three Norns in play, so I guess the Avacyn would just die, which you wouldn't really want. Darksteel Mutation on the Ameria Shepherd. There goes our Flying. Does give us an indestructible blocker, though we can't do. Ooh. Uh, it's gonna go into the Mimic Vat, which I don't love. Meteor Golem, oh no. Cage Sun? Protector? I mean, that's okay. <laughs> as long as the Ameria sticks, we just bring it right back. Oh no, because it'll go under the Mimic Vat. Ugh. We're gonna need another creature under the Mimic Vat. Well, down that goes. No, he chooses not to. He, uh, he wants the Ameria Shepherd. Cool. I'm cool with that. Mondrak, ew. Doesn't have a lot of token production that I can see, but in theory, it's a strong card. Sword on the Elishnorn. Yep, it is a 3-6. His team will get bigger over time. That is a concern. Moon Silver Key. You know what? We're going to put Rogue's Passage back in the deck. Cracking the Moon Key. Coming our way. Yep. Zombie gets to draw a card because we are poisoned. We can't block. It's unfortunate. Sword of Truth and Justice trigger, and they steal the Monarch. Yep. At some point, we may need to, like, I want to use this for removal, but we may also need to gain the life. So we'll want to be careful about that. Two poison counters on us now. Most of our creatures have Vigilance. I love it. Maria Shepherd, bring back the Protector of the Crown. Use the ability. We become the Monarch. Burnished Heart. Uh, that one's not real helpful for us. So play the War Room. KO Mancer's map. We gotta auto that one. Start drawing cards. 
Scavenger ground is not helpful. Activate the Makokoro. Um, Halvar's interesting. I put Halvar in here more for the uh, Sword of the Realm effects in case things die. And uh, it's not like a bad idea to get that going. Cast Sword of the Realms. Put Sword of the Realms on Nadar. Put, cast the Mask of Memory. Equip the Mask of Memory. And go to combat. Swing this into Xeno. They investigate. Uh, Nadar ventures into the dungeon. I think this is the advantage one. Yeah, we need this one so badly. Runestone Caverns. Uh, opponent's going to crack that clue immediately. Venture into the dungeon themselves. Target creature can't attack next turn. That one's pretty good. Put it on this thing. Uh, Runestone Caverns, big time. Been waiting so long to get the card advantage with Nadar. What do we get? Ooh, War of the Last Alliance. What was the other one? Ah, oh, the land. Yeah, play War of the Last Alliance. Do we think anyone else has a board wipe? Because if not, we can just go for Gisela. Or Brazella, rather. What else do we have? Just, uh, we have Gisela. We have Elishnor, Mother of Machines. I don't think the ETB is doing much. Krovax is interesting. No, it doesn't kill that one. If KO gets his back in, that gets more interesting. Um, yeah, let's get, let's get Gisela. Let's get Gisela. Where are we at in this dungeon now? The next one's Scry 3. Definitely like that. Oh, Mask of Memory, I forgot about that. We get the Mask of Memory trigger. More cards. Not needing the Burnished Heart in this moment. Bonder's Enclave is more card draw, though. Uh, discard the Burnished Heart. Ooh, Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, let's do that next turn. Let's go for Brazella. Make sure we have enough mana. That's 10. Yeah, we should have enough mana. Now let's go for this one. It should be big enough to survive, right? Yeah, it's big enough. Cast Brazella. Or cast Bruna, rather. And we'll leave up just a little bit of mana in case we need a Heliod's Intervention. Uh, yeah. Bring back the Karmic Guide. Sure, use the ability. I doubt it's going to survive. Oh, hey, it survived. How about that? Bring back the Burnish Chart. <laughs> Importantly, the you know what? The Burnished Heart... Oh, it dies immediately. No, Burnished Heart's not big enough. It doesn't get pumped by the Cage Sun. But if the Burnished Heart survived, uh, it can block the Elish Norn or whatever has the sword, which is important. It's KO on a Burnished Heart. I don't think it's going to do him a whole lot of good. Um, We could Stoneforge Mystic now. Yeah, we've got the mana floating, so why not, right? But if we weren't already the threat, we're definitely the threat now. Use the ability. Yeah, get the old Helm of the Host. Argentum Armor is also a decent one. Uh, we have a board. We have a nice little board. We are the Monarch, and we're about to assemble Brazella. I love assembling Brazella. It just makes me so happy. Uh, Myriad Landscape, gonna be useless for us. <laughs> More loot fodder. But we have Brazella, which cuts down, you know, a chunk of things that opponents can play. Basically turns off most spot removal. Board wipes are still live. I hope we don't get blown up, because our next turn's gonna be pretty cool. We're, like, almost set up to do... So Ooh, this is colorless also. This can block. That's... That is very notable. Poking the KO for zero once again. Get that sweet, sweet card draw. Uh, KO's gonna draw with the Bonders ornament. If we can survive with, like, anything uh, in play. Elish Norn is great with Helm of the Host. Nadar is great with Helm of the Host. Uh, Brazella will be really cool with Helm of the Host. One thing to note is we've used up most of our reanimation. I guess we still have a Mary as long as no one shoots that. Uh, the Ameria can, in theory, bring back Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide can bring back something else. If we ever get Ameria Shepherd back from the Mimic Vat, that would be really good, too. Luminous Broodmoth, I thought about including that one, but it's kind of weird, right? If it dies the first time from Norns, then it'll just die again immediately, so I opted not to go for that one. But I understand the sentiment. Good card overall. Wedding announcement at the beginning of your end step. Do make things, I think, eventually you draw a card. So much text, and it's so small. Cage Sun for KO? Yeah. He's got mana. This will make his stuff big enough to start surviving, I think. At least until Helm of the Host hits. Uh, he's gonna exile the Archon of... No! Not more Archon of Justice. Oh, the Archon. Oh, God. Can he get Brazella? Yes. Yes, he can. Oh, that's not good. If I could shoot RLish Norn, I probably would. I get that you have to do that, but that Archon's hit us three times now, so, like, and it's going to be repeatable, so, like, KO just has to die, is what has to happen. I don't know that we can get 35 on him. It'll be tough. Two Norns makes it a little better, especially if, like, other Norns start dying. Oh, yeah, if we get Krovax as our next card, uh, that might be enough to... If we can get other Norns out of play, that'd be a big deal. What's this getting pumped from? Oh, that. Make the Archon again? Going for our protector. 
Throne of Eldraine. Very sad about the Brazella. Very, very sad. That stupid Archon just uh, wrecking our face. Lost Brazella. Now, oh, where is it? We've lost most of our, like, most of the things I had is win conditions. Blade of Selves, uh, Stratoscythe, Brazella. Those are all win conditions. Protector was made to keep us alive. We still have the other Archon that can keep us alive. Do need to find it. I was going to draw two cards. Core Cartographer. There's Makokro off Zombie. Love that. There's our Gentum Armor. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Lauren. I'm curious to see if he goes after Chaos thing, because he can just machine gun down everything. Dies immediately. Can go under the Mimic that if he wants. Targeting our Cage Son. I love it. I love it. Uh, now some of our creatures die, which is unfortunate. Yep. Swinging our way. Opponent's going to steal the Monarch. Yep. Yeah, opponent's going to proliferate our thing. Oh, that's interesting, because that'll give Norn a double strike on our turn. Hmm. So we get a search for a legendary card. Um, yeah, get Crovax, I guess. Without the uh, doubled mana, life's going to be a lot worse. Uh, Ameria, get the Stoneforge Mystic. Use the ability. It'll die. Mimic that. Oh, we can get a Black Blader Forged. Yeah, that'll speed the clock up. Don't have Unblockable, though. Ooh. So double strike should be happening. Oh, we should have got Black Blade Reforged with the thing. Does that have to be a creature? Has to be a creature. Can't get Black Blade. Actually, you know what? Argentum Armor with Double Strike? Uh, we probably can't get Gen Argentum Armor and Helm of the Host. Yeah, which means we probably have to go for Argentum Armor then. Argentum Armor with Double Strike should be enough. Use the Stone Forge. Uh, we can get Black Blade. Ooh, Hammer is a free equip. Yeah, I like that because that saves the mana. Yeah, let's get Hammer on because now our mana's all jacked up. Toma Legends. Uh, double Strike, the ring tempts us. Choose a creature you control to be the ring bearer. Let's say the Nadar. War of the Last Alliance goes down. Uh, play the Scavenger Grounds, I guess. Kaomancer's map continues to trigger. Can we do a KO in one shot? That would be amazing if we could. Cast the Hammer. Free equip to Elish Norn. Uh, cast the Argentum Armor. Equip to the Norn. Use the ability. Helm of the Host. Re equip. Renounce. Sacrifice any number of permanents. You gain two life for each permanent sacrifice this way. Huh. Okay. Weird card. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Crap. Oh, we could respond to that. Opponent is at 49 life. With all of that, that means that we should... Pray that they don't have an instant. Uh, means that we should destroy the Aetherflux Reservoir. How many things can we get? We need to destroy the repeatable removal from KO. Definitely the Cage Sun, the Dino DNA, definitely the Sword. Ooh, Ether Flux Reservoir is down, so we're not getting blasted by that. Thank God. Uh, the thing where we have eight minutes left on our clock, man, we'll probably run out of time before we can finish this game. Ooh, Elish Norn, their Elish Norn went down because of, uh, I think an Anthem died or something? I think that's what happened. Oh no, they must have sacrificed it is what happened. Okay, oh, was already got four from our uh, Elish Norn there. So we only need, what, 17? We've got 16 there, and then when the second one comes in, it'll pump it more. Brave the Sands. Oh, uh, we get to scry three. Oh, no, that's, that's opponent's venture. Hammer. Equip the helm. Go to combat. Make a copy. Second Norn. Uh, more stuff dies. Uh, and yeah, I think we just got a... Uh, KO's open, so we're going to go that way. Actually, how big is this thing? That's a 2-5. Okay, this one into KO... This one into zombie, and that one into zombie. Argentum armor, we get to shoot something. Uh, they all crumble if we shoot this Norn. Oh, he's got Settle the Wreckage. Um, we don't even get any basics. We're all out of basics. Wow. Uh, we get to Scry 3, none of that helps us. I mean, Archon's okay, but, like, I don't think we're gonna survive. Put to the bottom. Eh, Court of Grace is okay, I guess. Top, and then Archon on top. Oh, maybe... No, that's got eight power. Yeah, we just we're just dead. Gauntlet of power. If we survive for some reason, that doubles our man. I think, right? So how does it work with snow coverts? Basic land. Yes, or would work with our lands. Surviving will be difficult though. Reverend Hoplite. Yeah, here they come. That's true conviction. Now we're gonna die. We'll crack the uh, scavenger grounds on the way out because I'm annoyed at everyone. We we took like almost all the spot removal this game. Any spot removal we didn't play. KO just hit us hard, and I'm not not feeling great about it at the moment. And, like, I get it. We were the threat. But I'm also annoyed. I just wanted to do cool stuff. So, uh, yep. Do that. Shut off those graveyards. Down we go. 
Yeah, I mean, after the settle, the wreckage with five minutes on the clock anyway, there's just, like, no way for us to get back into it. But I'm still annoyed about it, because we were about to do such cool stuff, and then, oh, we kept getting shot. That's always the conundrum with Heliod's intervention, by the way, is that when you use it for removal, a lot of times you need the life gain. We uh, didn't really have any other life gain going, and, uh, and we died to an attack. Gonna shoot the true conviction, which will slow down the ending of this game. Vidal can worry. Bonder's ornament. KO scoops. I mean, this is a very long game. We're at two and a half hours now. Maybe also thinking that he's just kind of out of it. Because Zeno's got like a reasonable board state. I don't know if it was like a, he had to go or if that uh, if he just felt like he didn't have anything left. Dreamstone Hedron. The other Elish Norn this is the four mana one. Has entirely too much text to read. Does some cool stuff though. Is weirdly good with banding. Been meaning to make that deck. I gotta see how many banded creatures are on MTGO. Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Uh, Elish Norn Tron has been assembled. Nice job, zombie. Got all three of them. That's an Avacyn. Uh, KO said he had a migraine, had to drop. Zombie scooped? I don't know what happened at the end right there. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Zombie was sensing the end. Uh, just like couldn't deal with a go wide board state. He had a few cards left in hand, though. But I don't know. Maybe he just ran out of gas, didn't have uh, what he needed. And also, this game is very long. Very, very long. Anyway, so here's the list. Uh, and you know what? The kind of equipment strategy that I was kind of on was actually working out pretty well. Uh, if I... I don't think we're ever going to do this again, but if I were, I would probably just tighten up the equipment package a little bit. I wasn't fully committed to it because I was thinking about doing tokens at one point. A few more free equips might help. Things that carry... Yeah, just things that carry the equipment better. Because uh, the big thing was we never got those attacks off in the early game, and that really kind of slowed us down, so... Uh, yeah, I guess just zombie had nothing left, is what they're saying in chat. So, yeah, that was uh, a very interesting game. It was very long, started off as a great idea, got a little tired toward the end, felt a little targeted. We were set up to do cool stuff on so many occasions, and then the removal came down at, like, just the wrong time. Settle the Wreckage really broke our back at the end, um, but being fourth in the turn order is just so painful. When that board wipe goes off, like, you're just behind everyone else, and it's rough. But anyway, we did get to see a lot of cool interactions and a lot of weirdness with multiple Norns. There were three in play for, like, most of the game. A few moments of four. Zombie assembled Elish Norn Tron, which was pretty cool. We got to assemble a Brazella. That was also fun. Didn't last all that long, sadly. Uh, you know, like, we picked up this Mind's Eye somewhere in that game. Would have been amazing. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have two new Patreon supporters in Greg Bolton and Technicolored Mime. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.